Good morning. I'm Brian Nelson, Vice President of Institutional Advancement at Dunwoody College of Technology. Welcome to our lead speaker series. I want to thank all of you for joining us this morning. Before I introduce our speaker, I want to remind you that all attendees are in listen and view only mode, which means that you'll be not able to activate your webcam or your microphone. You may use the chat feature to post questions for the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. It's my great pleasure this morning to welcome and introduce Angie Wardell. Angie is the Executive Vice President of Operations and President of Oil and Natural Gas Division at Graco Incorporated, a Minneapolis-based company that supplies technology and expertise for the management of fluids and coatings in both industrial and commercial applications. Angie has a proven track record of operational excellence at Graco holding leadership positions at several of Graco's locations in Minnesota, South Dakota, and China. She demonstrates success in factory planning, process automation, management, managing acquisitions, cost control, new product launches, quality improvements, and employee development. As EVP of operations, Angie provides operational guidance to Graco's supply chain operations, including manufacturing, procurement, customer service, and distribution. Angie provides operational support and oversight to facilities in Europe, Asia, South America, and all US locations to ensure best practices are implemented. As president of oil and natural gas division, Angie provides leadership in new product development, marketing and sales of these products into the chemical, industrial energy, transportation, oil and gas, pharmaceutical and safety industries. Angie has pioneered a number of employee development programs at Graco, including the development of an internal training program to improve the recruitment and retention of CNC machinist positions. In addition to building a strong internal program, Angie has helped to build close relationships with Minnesota technical colleges and faculty, enabling Graco to build a pipeline of talent and eliminate staff shortages in this highly skilled area. Angie is proud to engage with organizations that benefit her local community and industry. She previously served on the board of directors for the Graco Foundation, which focuses on enabling people to be self-sufficient and productive through education and workforce development. Angie currently serves on the board of directors of the Minnesota Private College Council. Angie will be giving a presentation on driving engagement, recruitment, and growth for careers in manufacturing. Angie has been a great partner for Dunwoody and I look forward to her presentation. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to Angie Wardell. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, Dunwoody, for having me here. Um, this is a great series that you guys are hosting and putting on, and I was very pleased to be part of it. Um, Dunwoody and Graco go back a long way. We have a strong partnership, and um, we'll kind of highlight some of that in, in the series here, but I'm really excited to, to kind of present as far as what we're doing in manufacturing to help grow careers. So let's let's get started. So today I'm going to talk, as Brian's mentioned, about driving engagement and recruitment in careers. And I look at it as a pretty holistic approach and through my career at Graco that we've, we've kind of focused on. And what I'm going to do is kind of walk through some of the things that we've done. Um, there's lots of things that people can do and companies are doing out there. These are just a few that we're actually looking at and we've kind of developed and found really good um, advantages for us doing. So the first thing is really, you know, making sure as we get through this and as we start doing development and outreach and all different types of stuff is making sure that people know all the great jobs in manufacturing. Um, sometimes people when I talk about manufacturing, they think about just just the factories and uh, really, I would say production. But for me, there's a whole host of, of jobs and careers and, and really jobs that people should be looking at for manufacturing and, and how we should be pulling those people into our into our companies and um, really making sure that we're getting the best people and getting all the people with us. I've got some examples here, you know, obviously production and operations, but you know, whether it's finance, whether it's supply chain, um, new product development, sales, marketing, nursing, environmental studies, safety, there's a whole host of jobs. So when I go to 
colleges and stuff and look at all the different careers they offer, a lot of those really do apply to manufacturing careers. So it's really important for us to make sure that we let people know that all these jobs really have a place in manufacturing and not just um, production. So when I think about um, looking at overall manufacturing, I think of it as a pipeline. And how do we you know, build a bench strength for our shop floor, for our um, office staff, for really the holistic look at manufacturing? And what we do is I kind of broke into a couple different things that we really look at as potential is one is outreach. Um, and that's how we get people even engaged um, into careers in manufacturing. It's partnering with the right um, places, the right schools and technology um, areas to, to make sure that we develop those strong links uh, to and can encourage students to, to look at manufacturing. It's working on training and engagement. So once we get people into our operations, how do we make sure that we continue to engage them and make sure they have the right tools to be successful? And then lastly, I want to talk a little bit about career paths. Um, again, as you get people, and this is any, any, any company really is, once you get people into your company, how do you make sure that you continue to engage them? Talk about what they would look for in the future and trying to figure out how we can see career paths for them and what they would need to do to help achieve some of those careers. So I want to start with outreach. So this one is actually pretty exciting for me. It's, it's really based on how do we get people early on um, engaged in manufacturing. I know that when I talk a lot of people about manufacturing, I think there's still a lot of thoughts as far as what is manufacturing? You know, is it dirty? Is it grimy? Um, and, and a lot of people don't know how exciting manufacturing really is. So some of the things we look at is the STEP programs. And we participate in a number of these programs. And what it does is it really helps highlight the cool stuff that we can do with technology. And whether it's with, you know, science, math, and and, and, and all the STEP programs and STEM programs, it's really trying to gauge students early. A little, little story is I've got a daughter and uh, she's a senior in high school now, but when she was in sixth grade, it was amazing to me that they already had started having these kids kind of path up what they want to do for their careers. They had to make a booklet. They had to figure out what possible careers they wanted. They had to figure out what kind of schooling they would have, what kind of money they would earn. And it really does force us to think that, you know, we need to really look early on to try and reach these students. So they start thinking about manufacturing and STEM programs early. So, you know, the, the one that we've looked at is, again, the STEP programs. It kind of engages also girls who are, I would say, underrepresented in manufacturing careers. Um, and really kind of working with them to try and get them engaged and knowing that they can do it. So it was really exciting to do some of those programs. But there's lots of things we can do as well. Um, we can do things with other local schools and nonprofits, um, do tutoring. It's a great way to help a student in a, in a field that they need some support in, but also to give them a way to talk to somebody who's got a position, who's got a job, talk about manufacturing, letting them know what kind of careers they can have in manufacturing. Again, it's getting the word out. It's making them aware of different options. We also do a lot with career fairs, um, even at the high school level, apparently not now. Um, the pandemic has, I would say, um, hindered some of these activities. But when, when they have career fairs at high schools and when you can go there and show what manufacturing is, show the different types of jobs, um, have our, our people at our companies go there and talk to them and say, this is what I do day in, day out. This is some of the fun things that I like about my career. And it's a way for us to really open that dialogue to make sure that we're really reaching out to them so they have a different perspective uh, that they have. And then with that, you know, equipment needs at, at schools, they always have needs for equipment. We do like to partner with schools and, and provide equipment that will help them grow. And then the last thing is really providing on-site tours. And this can be really a combination. We look at it as we'd like to bring students to our facility. We have a number of facilities for us around the Twin Cities. We like to have schools come in and take a tour and, and students see what, what they have for equipment, what people do, take a walk around to see what true manufacturing is today and maybe not have the old stereotype of old, dirty, dungy, um, but really show what's new in manufacturing. But we also had, well, we have actually teachers. Um, once, one summer we had a group of about a dozen teachers come in and it was just to show the teachers about manufacturing. And that way they could help relay manufacturing careers and options to their students and have them better prepared to, to talk and, and, and kind of explain what's going on out there in the world of manufacturing. So those are just some things that we found that have been really helpful that they start to have that connection, start to have the dialogue, and really to try and drive some of the discussions around manufacturing. Um, 
Another thing that we really did about five years ago is we created a video. Um, so we have a lot of careers uh, options and, and positions at Graco, but one of the key ones for us that's a technical position is our machinist. And they work in our production facility. And they run very complex machines. <clears throat> they Some have robots on them, some are just American controlled, but they're, they're complicated, but they're fun, they're cool, and they're, we really need them to be running. Um, so what we do is we want to say, how can we make sure we have a good pipeline of machinists? And so we created this video and we had a couple of our own great employees on the video talking about how they got into machining, why they got into machining, what they really like about it, and show them running the equipment, show them what they were doing day in, day out. And it actually was a way for us to try and encourage people to see, hey, this is a career. This is tactically what you'd be doing. This is what people today like about it. And with that, we created what I would consider this little um, on the right top right there. It's a magnet <clears throat> and it's got a little code on there. And we did this so that we could hand these out to students and they could take them home with them. And the benefit we wanted to get out of this was really not just so that they could see the video, but also that they could take it home and share it with their parents. Um, one of the things that we see is that parents are really obviously big drivers of students' career choices. And if a parent doesn't think that manufacturing is a good career, it sometimes can hinder a student from really pursuing that. So we wanted to take this opportunity to have something that we could have the student take home, open up on their smartphone, show the, their parents the video and say, hey, this is manufacturing, this is why I wanna do it, and try and also help encourage parents to support choices, alternative choices, maybe a two-year technical school versus a four-year school, um, if that's really the right thing for the student. So, so this was kind of a neat thing that we did. And um, obviously it's, it's on YouTube, so if anybody wants to go see it, they can. Um, but it, I, I think it, it actually enabled us to really share uh, some of what a machinist really is. Another thing we do is um, for outreach is Manufacturing Day. And this is a national program. It's really every October it happens. Um, we did not do it this past October, so we were a little disappointed that we couldn't, couldn't get everybody on our campus. Um, but obviously hopefully next year with the uh, pandemic gone, we will get back, back in with this. And I've got a couple pictures, and these are actual pictures at our facility. And you know, what I love about this program is that it's a one day event. We host a lot of students and organizations that come through, uh, they tour, they do hands-on activities, and then we have an open house where they can meet with some uh, schools. And they're here at our campus for about an hour and a half, and we, we do this all day for one day. And these pictures kind of highlight just the excitement that when I see these kids go through there, it's it's eye opening, and it's a it's it's a joy for us to see that because it makes us feel great that we're actually helping someone else see manufacturing in a different light and possibly open up a new door for them. You know, when I look at some of the responses, because we do have them take like a little survey and, and let us know what they think, so we can keep improving the uh, the area. You know, some of the responses are, "Wow, I I didn't even know what manufacturing was," or wow, this is so much cleaner than what I thought manufacturing was. Or I had this one, one time where this, this couple girls were going through and I asked what they thought. And the one girl said, I know I wanna be an engineer. And it was just, it's just amazing. So um, really excited about this program. Can't wait to get back to it again. Um, the next slide I do have is a video and I'm gonna show you, it's about a minute long. And it'll kind of highlight what we do for manu manufacturing data, trying to show um, what students can do and, and how they interact with, with some of the equipment, so. Hope you enjoy it.
Okay, so that kind of just gives a little example of how we, I would say, um, attack manufacturing day. And like you can see, we have a lot of employee engagement in these programs. And as I'm talking through the rest of these programs, what, what I will say is that we really drive and we have a great team at Graco that helps with these. Not one person can do it all, uh, whether we're doing manufacturing day, whether we're doing outreach programs, uh, training programs, it really is a team effort. And I think that's what makes it successful with the company too, is if you can get a lot of good buy-in from your, 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 your company's team members to make sure that everybody's participating because that's how you that's how you win and that's how you can make um, action. Um, I kind of skip over to now is really is partnerships and this is really key for us. Um, you know, you know, once the students make their choices and they go to a, a two year vocational four year um, institution, um, it's really important for us to really make sure that we're um, partnering with companies and having a good connection, making sure that, you know, we, we understand what their programs bring to the table. Um, so they also make sure they understand what Graco has and what opportunities we have with our positions, what our companies are like. And, and it really helps make sure that I would say that we're better at um, connecting students and, and our company as one to make sure it's a good fit. Because I do think that's important um, to make sure that you're a good fit with the company and that the company's a good fit with you as well. So partnering with them can be making sure that we, we present at the, at the schools um, when, when asked. We give tours when needed. If there's equipment needs and specifically will help the, um, the institution um, improve the, the teaching and the outcome of the students. We like to really partner with um, institutions on that as well. And then providing internships. That's kind of key. And I got another slide that talks a little bit more about internships and how we've really benefited from those. So I want to talk about one specific uh, partnership that we did, and this was with, um, I would say, the technical schools. And got them here on the right. And this was really part of our machinist program that I talked earlier on when we made the YouTube video. We also had a very um, strategic partnership that we created with uh, the local technical schools. And it really was a, part, a way for us to get fully involved and make sure we had a really good pipeline of students that were graduating from these institutions um, be able to come and work for Graco. So we did uh, pretty something unique. We had a, a team put together at Graco, uh, about a dozen people. We assigned people to the different schools, made sure that we had a, a good partnership connection with each school. Uh, we worked with to make sure what their needs were for the schools, uh, any equipment needs, uh, making sure that we could, you know, again, drive internships, um, you know, make sure we have good tours. And it really helped us to make sure that we had a good connection and that we could have keep a pipeline of students as students were coming into their program and we had a need, we could make sure that we could partner well and, and fill our position needs to make sure that we could continue producing product and satisfy customers at the end. So this was a pretty, pretty strategic partnership for us. Um, we started it um, about eight years ago and um, it's been very successful and we've been very happy with with, with these organizations. So go on a little bit to training. Um, the one thing we do is, you know, training is such a, it's a big area, I think. Um, and, it, and it can be very wide ranging from, you know, uh, buddy, partnering with a, a buddy and doing some hands-on training with somebody who, you know, when you get hired on new, you just have a buddy system. It could be actual more sending people out for additional training online. It could be for schooling. Um, it could be for more technical training, um, maybe part of this even just development. Maybe it's not training for your current job, but it's training for your next job. Um, so I think, you know, training is a pretty, pretty broad area. And I think, you know, it's something that a lot of companies continue to, you know, always work on and try and see what they can do uh, to improve it. Um, it's, it's a never, it's one of those never ending things. I think you can always improve and keep uh, doing more for training. The one thing I want to kind of talk about is a program that we did. Um, at Graco, and again, the theme of this is a kind of tying the, the one area that we were focused on. We focused on many areas, but this is one area, and this again is our, our machinist. Um, so again, we did the YouTube one, we did the partnership with the technical schools, and then we also did what we had is an internal training program, and this was developed in uh, 2010, so 10 years ago. Um, we basically put through 72 machines uh, through this program, and the program has evolved. It started out as a program where we had um, one trainer with four students and they were in there for about a year. Um, and what it's evolved to now is really we have one trainer uh, with four students and they graduate in five months. But one student graduates every, fi every five weeks. So it's a, it's a really good rotation program where we, we can rotate a new person in there and then have a graduate coming out every five months to help us fill our positions. And, and that's been a, a great benefit for us. They, 
they really, you know, they come from the technical schools. We, we make sure that they have a good background, they have good education, and they can do the job. And then we put them in what we would say is we great go eyes them. And it's really a way for us to make sure that they've got all the tools, not just from the school, from the, I would say, the, the really good base of learning that they've created, but it's a way for them to understand our equipment, understand our processes. We have some different inspection stuff. In, in, I, I see different machine tool technology. Uh, we, we, we talk through blueprints. We give them additional online classes. Uh, we do some FANUC robot training. So it's a great way to, to put additional training on them so that when they do actually start running their own machine sets and I would say do more full production, they're more better prepared. And it's really helped just to make sure that, you know, when they go to the off shifts or when they go into their own machine area, they're more comfortable and they're really more successful because they've got more tools in the toolbox really to make sure that they can fully do their job. So this has been a program that like we started and we've evolved it. We kind of continue to improve it and um, it's been a great, great ad. The other thing I'll say is that when they're in the program, they're actually running production parts, but we're just making sure that they're, they're over, have a good supervision and a good trainer to make sure that they're, I would say, assisted as they're, as they're learning. The other thing we've done with this program since we started, besides machinists, we actually we started, you know, new engineers can go into the program and actually get some additional training on machining. Um, we've also had our acquisition sites, you know, they've come in and we've utilized it for outside of just Minnesota as a tool for us to help um, really try and, and drive improvement in our overall machine. You know, and the other thing is to think about, okay, we do all this stuff, how do you know? So we do measure it. And what we've, what we've come to measure is that people that go through this program really do have higher productivity than students, or, or uh, I would say, hires from the outside that don't get to go through it. So for us, I think there's a direct um, comparison as far as saying what the training is doing versus what we're getting from it. And we're really pleased with, with this program that we have. You know, I put this under training too, even though it's an internship and co-ops, we, um, we're pretty big advocates for internships, co-ops, to support all of our different functions, engineering, I got a list up there, sales, uh, supply chain, marketing, finance. We, we try and cover the gamut because all the positions are important and it's a good way for us to have students come in, they can get some experience, they can get some learning, we can get some benefit from their, their work. And then they can try out great and we can try out them too. So as positions open up when they graduate, we can see is it a good fit to have them come back and join Graco. <clears throat> the thing with it, when I put this under training is that um, when they come back, if we convert them to full time, we really did a training program with them during their co-op and internship. And when they come on full time, they're now ready to kind of get up and run right away. So it's, it is a great tool for us for training um, that we get these students in and, and we have a a good conversion rate to full-time positions, which we're pretty pleased with. Um, even during the pandemic, we, we kept with our interns and co-ops. Uh, we kept them, some had to work from home. Um, some were able to come in and work for us um, on site, but it's really been a good program and we're pretty, pretty excited about continuing this going forward. <clears throat> I kind of want to throw this slide in here just to talk a little bit about engagement, even though it, um, it, it's, it's, I would say some of these uh, points I have here on the side, I, you know, I, I looked them up on the internet, but there's a couple that are cool, key, I would say cool items and, and key things that I'd like to just highlight is, you know, when you talk about, you know, low engagement versus high engagement, I mean, you know, one of the statistics I found online was, you know, it's 200%, you know, higher if you have a highly engaged employee versus a low. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but you know, it feels right. It feels like if you have an engaged employee that you're gonna get higher performance um, out of that employee. Um, the other thing that I want to look online for engagement is, you know, you know, new challenges. I, I do think that that is pretty key to continue to challenge people and give them opportunities so that they can continue to grow and they are excited to come to work. And then the last one I kind of pulled up and, and I've seen this even with our surveys that we do, you know, at, at our company, you know, saying thank you, giving a recognition. Sometimes that is the best way to have engaged employees and make sure that they're feeling like they're part of the team. Um, it, it just can't be understated. So um, I just kind of want to have this up there because I do think it's important as far as development. Um, and uh, so always, always pay attention to these things. And I would say just, you know, continue to keep engagement on your forefront. So shifting a little bit to uh, your career pathway. So once we have employees and once um, they're, they're, they're working in a company, you know, one of the things that I think is pretty important is, um, we've done it at Graco is, 
is we call everyday performance management. And the thing that's unique about it is that it's when I first started, you know, years ago in a company at Graco, uh, you got your annual review, right? You got your review once a year and you might might have gotten some feedback throughout the year, but it wasn't quite as consistent. And I think you waited for that one year. Um, and kind of what we've done is we've gone to every day. And, and I think it's important because people need that. People need feedback every day um, or they need a consistent feedback. So, you know, are they on the right track? Are they not? You know, talk about, you know, progression. Talk about, you know, maybe somebody wants to stay in their, their current job. They want to be great at it. Maybe they want to progress within a certain discipline. They don't want to move to another discipline. But maybe somebody does. Maybe somebody's willing to relocate. Maybe somebody um, wants to stay in the local market. So I think having those discussions make, makes the company stronger and also, again, encourages an employee to know that they have options and also puts it, I would say, in their wheelhouse too. Uh, employees need to know what they need to do to drive their career. It's not going to happen overnight and it's not going to happen with no effort. So giving them feedback, I think, really is important and, and, and kind of letting them grow on their own. Um, the last thing I was talking about is really careers. Um, again, kind of on the everyday uh, performance management. You know, everything is unique and I would say that we have to treat different people, different ways. So, I mean, we have goals, education, not one career is the same, but it's, it's talking about and making sure that they understand what they need. If they do want to move up and progress, what do they need? What skill sets um, and, and what do they need to do personally to drive that themselves to make sure that they can be successful going forward? So, um, <clears throat> again, have the conversations, have open conversations. Um, I'm hoping people, sometimes people are a little impatient with careers, but um, I think it's important to have the discussion so they know what they need to do to, to continue moving forward. So with that, that's kind of my presentation today. Um, again, hope that you know we've kind of covered a couple different things, outreach, partnerships, we've got training, pathways. Um, you know, it's, it's really about, you know, how do we make sure that we keep moving companies forward? And to do that, we need good people coming into companies to keep them moving forward. So appreciate your time. So with that, I'll say thank you and I'll pass it back to Brian. Angie, thank you for your great insights. We've got several questions stacked up here and we'd like to, if you have some time to take some of those questions, that would be great. Um, the first question is, um, what type of outreach activities have you found to continue while participating in the current COVID constraints? So um, we've, we've, we've still done a lot of stuff with, <clears throat> excuse me, the colleges. So I would say that we've done a lot of stuff virtually. Um, We've, we've done even like um, recruiting for career fairs, um, things like that. We've all done virtually, so it has not been as easy. Uh, we haven't been able to do a lot of any of the on-site stuff, so that's been more difficult. Um, so the whole Zoom, even interviewing with Zoom or doing presentations, um, we've done some things with like SWE um, at, at the College of Iowa, and we did a virtual uh, presentation there. One of my one of my managers did. Uh, so. It's hard, but I think we're trying to get better, at least still trying to connect, even though we can't be there in person. Very good. Thank you. We have a two part question or two questions in one question here. How many years do, out does Graco do workforce planning? Does Graco collaborate with other companies and educational institutions to anticipate your workforce needs? So we do it two things. So we continue to look at our internal workforce needs. We look at, you know, um, <clears throat> the growth we have for different uh, product lines that would grow our need for employee base, whether it's in production or whether it's in the office um, support staff. Um, we look at, you know, if, if people have retirements coming up. If it's going to be more of a continued, um, I would say, pipeline that we would need to fill. So we do that internally. And then we do talk with different organizations at the college levels talking about, you know, their pipeline, you know, are they seeing their, you know, enrollments, are they still seeing at the right levels? Um, are, are they seeing them drop? Are they seeing them increase? Um, again, we try to work with them to say, to make sure that their pipeline stays full. So that, again, it can make our pipeline stay full, whether it's through um, the four-year colleges for like engineering, supply chain, things like that, or whether it's the technical schools uh, with maybe the automation, the machining, the welding, those type of, of careers. So we try and stay ahead of it. Um, and then if we, if when we do talk with colleges, if there is, we see like a, a, a dip, what we've tried to do with some of the technical schools say is what can we do to help 
again, push that back to the, the high schools and the earlier ages to make sure that we're getting the message out. And that's kind of like when we did that video for the machinist a video. Uh, we wanted to really try and encourage more people to, to go into the programs. So we wanted to create that video to try and get that, that engagement. So. Great, thank you. What types of employee engagement activities does Graco offer or hold for its employees? Um, so I would say there's two ways we do that. One way is just through, I would say, more of the, um, the company effort to make sure we keep employees in, in knowledgeable and informed. We have our, we call it Graco Village. It's, it's a format online intranet that um, has lots of information as far as, you know, stories that happen around the company. Um, we're a worldwide company, so there's lots of things going on that maybe someone in one area doesn't know about. So we highlight a lot of different, um, I would say, programs or initiatives or something great that someone did. Um, so that kind of has all those things on it. We also have, you know, our president, our CEO, Pat McHale, is pretty um, in tune with the, with the company. And he has asked the CEO, so he encourages people to ask him questions and he answers them and shares all the information with everybody. Um, we have, I would say, bowling leagues, we have trap shooting leagues, we have golf leagues. Um, we have some that are more, I would say, formal with the company that they help organize and some that people, even in some groups, they might have coffee in the morning Zoom meetings now. Um, in my purchasing team, they've, uh, some of the, the groups have done a Wednesday coffee, coffee Zoom meeting just to kind of stay connected. So we try and encourage it through, I would say, one source through our Graco Village. We also have quarterly meetings that are done to try and make sure that we spread the word out and again, keeping people in the know, making sure people know what's going on um, to make sure that um, they feel like they're, again, part of the whole team, even though we have uh, multiple locations, um, I think is probably the most important thing for engagement. All right, good, thank you. Um, we have um, one comment here, great presentation with an exclamation point, so that's a plus. Um, considering Graco's expertise in the application and moving of fluids, did COVID-19 provide an opportunity to adapt product lines towards disinfectants or other tools to fight COVID-19? Yeah, yeah, so actually, actually we did. Um, so I think it, it's, it's affected our company, I would say differently, different ways. Um, and one of the product lines actually is we, we obviously spray paint, uh, we spray stain, we can, um, a lot of buildings that you see, the walls behind me, we can use our paint sprayers to apply that. So we took that technology and we did adapt it in our, our contractor team in our Rogers facility. They did a fantastic job. They saw the need, they made the pivot, and they basically created a product that could spray these disinfectants. And, and they are different as far as how the it has to go through our unit. So they had to make some modifications, but they jumped on it, they made the changes, they got the parts, and they started selling units. So you know, I hear when at, at, in my office here, we use them all the time. We, we spray um, the handrails, we spray the areas, the high contact areas. So we've, uh, we have benefited from that, uh, but I will give kudos to our team that they jumped on it and they made a new product in an extremely short amount of time uh, that really is helping during the pandemic. So that's been, that, that has been a bright spot of the pandemic that we feel that we were part of something helping to uh, protect people and, and make it better. Great, thank you. Um, one final question here. How, how do you and your leadership team sustain the engagement approach over time to ensure consistency as well as staying true to the guiding principles of Graco? Yeah. You know, um, I would say it's a lot of work. Um, it, it's a lot of effort. I think you have to continue to have, you know, for us as we're spread out in this organization, we have multiple sites and multiple divisions. It's making sure that um, I would say for consistency, we continue to talk. We continue to have, I would say, single point um, um, discussions so that we can keep all of our, even like our factory managers. We might have a, a group factory manager meeting with all the different sites around the U.S. and, and talk about what's going on, um, even with the pandemic. You know, what are we doing? You know, what is, what's the needs? Our engineering team does that. So again, it's trying to keep people engaged from a um, group area to make sure that we stay connected. But it's also then with our, our, I would say, our HR team and our president, you know, saying, you know, making sure that we stay consistent and, and putting programs out there that really are making sure that we're, we're, we're asking people, how are things going? Like ask the CEO, how are things going? If you, if you have a comment or concern, bring it up and we'll address it. Uh, we have, you know, monthly CNI meetings or communication information meetings with our, with our teams. 
And again, it's making sure that we stay that connected, um, that we don't just get sucked into doing your job every day, but you have to make sure that you're actually talking and, and keeping that open discussion going. Good, we had a, another question come in. Um, what factors drive your decision on whether to partner with secondary education institutions or develop your own training for specific needs? So I would say that um, we partner with with um, secondary or, or post post um, institutions to make sure that we for any job that we think needs a specific skill set that we that they give the really good base. We want to do something internal is if we think that there's a specific training thing that really doesn't apply to I would say the general public that is more specific to Graco. Like for the machinist one, we have very specific machines. We have very specific processes and tools that we want to, to utilize and. They get the good base at the technical school, but they can't get the actual Graycoized um, version of that training on site. So, kind of like with planning too, with supply chain, um, we, we we get a lot of our planners through the four-year uh, programs uh, with supply chain background. But then we like to bring them in. We do specific training on our systems and how we actually operate um, in production at, at Graco. So, it's probably more of a supplemental thing for the internal training, and it's we like the base that we get from the institutions and the technical schools and the four-year schools. Great, Angie. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time to be with us this morning, and thank you for your great partnership with Graco. It's put done the company, and you have been great friends to Dunwoody, and appreciate all your time and energy that you put forward to the work that we're doing as well. And um, again, thanks for being here. I want to encourage everyone to join us for our next lead presentation on Thursday, February 4th. R.T. Ryback, President and CEO of the Minneapolis Foundation will be our presenter that day. I want to wish everyone a wonderful and safe holiday and thank you for joining us this morning. Okay, thank you, Brian.